show you how to use the force plate here to figure out the acceleration of our lovely elevator at the school. So let's head on in to see how this is going to work. What you're going to need to do is take a big old force plate in your lab quest, put your force plate on the ground, and plug it in. Now, if everything goes well, what we should get is a reading on the screen. Now, right now, it says that there's 158 newtons or so on there, but clearly there is not. So the first thing you're going to have to do is zero that out. A trick we've learned is you can just tap on the screen and hit zero. And it's just like in all the electro electronic balances we have. Okay, then what you're going to need to do is you or yourself are going to have to stand on the balance and you're going to have to get your force. Well, I guess the holidays were good with me because I am actually <laughs> quite a bit more forceful than I used to be. Uh, we'll just chalk that up to being extra close. But it's important before we start here that you need to write this down. This is your actual weight in newtons. And so for me, I would use it looks like around if I stop, you know, doing the jumping up and down there. Somewhere around 1080 four ish. We'll just go with that because I'm wobbling back and forth. All right, so now that we have that number, there's a couple more things I want you to do on here. What I want you to do is go to sensors and go to data collection. I want you to make a quick change here, and that is to take the sampling rate and go from the duration of 10 seconds, click on that, and what should happen is a little keyboard, and let's try about 120 seconds. So that's two minutes. Uh, we'll see how this goes. If it's not enough time, we can always come back in, change this, and run it again. So you're just going to hit OK. And all it's doing is now when we hit the play button, it's going to record for a total of 120 seconds or two minutes. All right, we're on third floor. So I'll stand on the scale. As soon as I'm ready, I'm going to hit the button number one. I hit one, I'm going to hit play, give it a few seconds to start collecting data, and now we start moving. Okay. So as you're going down, just kind of take um, some qualitative measurements. That just means kind of notice what it feels like as we're working our way down in the elevator just wait as we go. Now the changes in my apparent weight between the ground and I are pretty minimal. It's fluctuating back and forth. But don't worry, the lab quest is recording everything we need. Alright, here we are. First floor. You'll notice that we're only about halfway through our data collection. So I'm just going to notice here it's about 35 seconds when I hit the button. And let's go back up to third floor. All right, we made it to the top, so fun. All right, now what we're gonna do is hit stop. I should have stayed on there to make this life a little bit easier because now we have to redo the whole darn video. Step okay, off. everybody just came back to the classroom here to get a better view of what's going on with the lab quest. Now, uh, when I took my trip on the elevator, yours might look a little different, but I ended up stepping off the force plate before I hit stop for taking data, and so what happened is the force plate recorded going all the way down to zero, and that means my entire trip, where the data wasn't moving as much, um, got very small and hard to see. You don't have to redo the trip again. I recommend you run it twice, just because the second time it'll be zoomed in a little bit better, and you'll be actually able to see the changes that are fluctuating as you ride. But what we want to do is just go ahead and remove this. So what we do is we collect the data that we want to get rid of, and now for some reason I've had to do this a couple times, but I'm selecting that last little bit. You'll notice that it's just the last little bit where it drops down a lot, and then you go up to graph and you hit strike through data. Now if it didn't work the first time, it got rid of some, I don't know, for some reason I've just had to do it a couple times. There it is. Okay. It took me a while, but eventually I got rid of that last little trip there in the end, and this is now the graph that you want to have. Now if you take a look, you can see that we have four peaks. So there's a peak here, a peak up here, a peak up here, and then a peak down here. Now you might say, well, what about that peak? Or Mr. Cross, you point to the bottom down here, not the top up there. But do realize that it's an elevator, so every time we started to move, there's a little bit of um, reverberation or bounce back that's going on, and that's what's going on. But here's the four different times that the elevator changed its motion. So we were standing, and then I pushed the button, and we started moving down. Then we were going, and then we got to the bottom, and so we stopped. We stood there for a second, I pushed the button again, we started going up, and then finally we got to the top and we stopped, and so that's my acceleration right there. Now to get the information that we're looking for, all you have to do, since this graph is a little hard to read, these lab quests work, do a pretty good job, um, if you want to, just select the information that you're going for, so we're going to select the first peak, and you come up here to analyze, and you go to statistics, 
and you'll say force. And what it'll do is it'll give you a whole bunch of information over here that's what we're looking for. And so what we're looking for over here is the peak um, on the bottom. And so this would be the smallest data point, otherwise known as the minimum. So when we first started to go down from the third floor, the force that this uh, force probe was reading was 973. Okay? And so you would do that. Now to get this off, just go back up to Analyze, Statistics, and Unselect. And then to do the next peak, what you'd want to do is collect and select right here. And do Statistics again, Force. And what you end up getting here is you would want to take a look at between the min and the max. And once again, this is when we got to the bottom, so it peaked up first. And so this time we're looking for the maximum data point, which in our case would be not the min at 1055, but the max would be 1165. So 1165 newtons is what we're going on there. Okay, you would repeat this for all of them. Now if you select, you'll notice that it doesn't change because what it's doing is it's going between these two brackets. So to do that, honestly the fastest way to do it is just go back to statistics, turn it off, and then do analyze statistics and turn it back on again. If you do that, you'll get another new max peak there. So the big one was 1233. This is when we started coming back up. And then finally, um, we can take a look at what was the maximum peak for when we got to the very tip top and slowed down. So we take the statistics off and then we put the statistics back on. If you do that, we're looking now, it's not this peak up here because this is the one that peaks down. And so we're gonna take a look here at the minimum. The minimum is 962. And so that would be the force uh, that we would use at that, plate, at that point that was between me and the ground. Now another interesting thing you'll notice is if you come here and you take a look at any of the journey, so this is when we were going down in the elevator, um, what was my force during that time? Now if we come back here, you'll notice that the force is remaining a little bit constant. It is fluctuating up and down because that's just me wobbling back and forth. But if we use the statistics tool, um, people think that because we were going down we would weigh less. But if we go there and we take a look at the average, the mean, we notice that it's 1098. And that is very similar to what I started with in the video. So you can take a look that during the trip, my average force on the force plate is the same as it was when we were uh, standing still. Okay, so that's how you use it. Remember, the, the key is statistics, and that's how it works. Um, yeah, so we've got four peaks. Start, slow down at the bottom, speed up when we were at the bottom, and then slow down once we got back to the top. Uh, hopefully hey that everybody. helps you. Yeah. Mr. Clausen, just got done running through how to use the lab quest to find the uh, parent force or the force between your feet and the floor in the elevator. We'd call this the normal force as well. With that information, you can use that to figure out what the net force is acting on your body as you were going through on the trip in the elevator. Now remember, there's four accelerations you need to find. Uh, when you start moving from the top on your way down, when you're moving on the way down and then you stop at the bottom, when you're at the bottom and you're stopping, you start moving back up. That'd be acceleration number three. And then finally, the last one you're going to find is when you're moving up and then you stop at the top. So there's four accelerations. You're going to have four different apparent forces. Go ahead and collect the data you need. If you have any questions, come talk to me in class. Otherwise, we'll just see you later.